Welcome back to Bloomberg's Bottom Line. J.P. Morgan Chase, as we have been reporting, saying today it had a record $4.8 billion profit for the fourth quarter. Net income was $1.12 per share, but analysts were expecting a dollar per share. The news from J.P. Morgan Chase could set the tone for other banks reporting earnings next week, and that could eventually mean a return of a meaningful dividend after a three-year pause. Joining us by phone from Portland, Maine, is Gerard Cassidy, RBC Financial financial analyst. Gerard, welcome to Bloomberg News. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Mark. What do J.P. Morgan's earnings really mean for investors today? I would say that um, what we saw from J.P. Morgan Chase was two things. First, credit improvement continues. This has been a theme for the banking industry for the last 12 to 14 months. It showed up once again, and it will continue to show up well into 2012. But more importantly, the reason the stocks are doing more, uh, doing better today is that J uh, J.P. Morgan Chase was able to show everyone that they achieved revenue growth. And part of that revenue growth came from increased loan growth, particularly on the commercial loan side. So I think that's what's the real read here, is that the banking industry is coming back and loan growth should materialize in 2011. If that loan growth does materialize, what is that going to mean for regular folks, perhaps, who may want to get a mortgage, a home mortgage? I think if you're a bankable credit, more inv more borrowers are becoming uh, confident to go out and borrow, whether it's a corporation, a small business, or a homeowner. So if you're somebody who can qualify, there's plenty of capital to be lent, and J.P. Morgan Chase showed that today. That record profit was also the result of a record $2 billion in reserve reductions. The CEO, Jamie Dimon, telling reporters on a conference call today, quoting here, we only take down reserves pretty much when we had to and he said this is due to accounting requirements. Will J.P. Morgan Chase now have to continue to be aggressive regarding its reserves? I think they will be uh, not so much aggressive, but they'll be more um, realistic about their reserves. Many of these banks, including J.P. Morgan, set aside billions of dollars of reserves during the financial crisis. Now what they've discovered is that they're not, they don't need them all. So as a result, they are bringing them down into income by allowing their net charge-offs to exceed their loan loss provisions. And yes, it's partly driven by the accountants, but it's also driven by the practice, the, the business conditions today for J.P. Morgan. Is the damage to banks' balance sheets now repaired? and can investors expect to see a restoration of dividends? We should mention that reinstating dividends would require regulatory approval. That's correct. The balance sheets are being repaired. Some of them are close to being fully repaired, but none of them are fully re Most of them are not fully repaired. But you make a good point about the regulatory approval. The largest banks, the banks that are so-called the SCAP banks, these are the banks that go through the stress test. Uh, there's 14 of, uh, of the traditional commercial banks being included in this test. They submitted their data last Friday to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has promised to get back to everybody by the 20th. 1st of March, and the Federal yeah. Reserve will deem to see who can raise their dividends. Uh, Gerard, in our last 20 seconds, if the banks continue to report record profits, will there be temptation to make acquisitions as opposed to reinstating dividends? There will be both. Dividends will come first, and mergers and acquisitions are starting, and they kicked off in December. We are going to see a big wave of M&A over the next three years, but we're also going to see dividend increases as well. All right, Gerard Cassidy, uh, RBC Financial Analyst, joining us by phone from Portland, Maine. Thanks so much.